This is a special presentation from the Brighton Central School District Board of Education. Good evening and welcome to the Brighton Central School District Board of Education Education Meeting for April 24th, 2018. Uh, to begin this evening is as our usual custom at every board meeting, we offer the opportunity for public participation. Any members of the public that are here in attendance are welcome to address the board. Uh, you may make a statement, ask a question. Uh, we ask that you raise your hand and be recognized. I will ask you to move to the podium, please, so that we can capture both the video and the audio. Uh, we do ask you to be brief, and uh, if there is a particular question that we can answer this evening, we will. If not, we will get back to you uh, as soon as we have all the information that you may request. So is there anyone in attendance this evening that wishes to address the board in any matter? Uh, anybody? We have a big crowd tonight, which is always wonderful. <laughs> All right, seeing that we have none this evening who wish to address the board at this point, uh, board, may we approve the, may we have a motion please to approve our agenda for this evening? So moved. Uh, moved by? Seconded. Marv and seconded by Larry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Uh, motion please then for approval of the minutes for our April 10th uh, business meeting. So moved. Second. Uh, moved by Karen and seconded by Andrea. Does anyone have any additions or corrections, deletions to those minutes? Uh, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Uh, before we then begin the remainder of our program, I do remind those who uh, may be watching us at home or uh, in future uh, rebroadcasts on our YouTube channel. First of all, I want to remind folks that our Time Warner cable, now Spectrum cable channel, is now 1303. So we're anticipating. A, a bit of a drop in viewership while people find 12 to 1303. But anyway, <laughs> the point is all of the material for tonight's meeting is posted on the school district website. And under the Board of Education tab, uh, min Minutes and Agendas, the agenda for April 24th will contain all the material for this evening. And we will also add any additional material uh, after tonight if there's something that comes new. So you can always follow a meeting or check anything with regard to agendas or minutes of past meetings. So we always want to remind folks of that. Uh, to begin with this evening, we welcome Dr. Debbie Baker uh, for updates on our 20th first century learning process. Thank you. Thank you, Mark, and thanks to the Board of Education. I have to say that I'm just thrilled to bring you kind of this update. I know I've been doing this starting about three or four years ago on an annual basis, really just as an opportunity to share with you some of the phenomenal work that's happening across the district by both our teachers as well as our students and the impact that's really having um, on our students. So to start out, I just want to lay a foundation. A few years back, um, we really started to frame kind of what would drive the work, whether we were talking about learning spaces work, work with technology, or just innovative pedagogies. And we really stepped back and said, you know, how can we, how can a new vision of learning environments be shaped by the latest research? Because we are always looking towards those best practices and learning theory, emerging technologies, environmental sustainability, adult and child collaboration, and community engagement. How can we bring all of that together? to provide for the best experience for our students. And then, of course, being informed by our blueprint goal that our students need to be prepared for professions in life that we have not yet imagined. So it's kind of always this, this crystal ball that we're looking into to try to stay ahead of it um, as best we possibly can. As I started to think about what I wanted to share with the Board of Education and the community tonight, I have to be honest with you when I say it was just very difficult. There were so many examples of such phenomenal work going on. Beth does a fabulous job every other week kind of encapsulating some of that. So I'm just trying tonight to almost give you just again a little piece of what some of that work is. We've got some um, members of the Brighton Genius Barons to share some of their work as well as a video. So hopefully at the end of my presentation and theirs, you kind of get this idea and, and, and kind of a feel-good feeling to say, you know what, we're not only headed in the right direction, but really good stuff is happening. So we frame our work under, um, under kind of some 21st century skills around critical thinking, problem solving, collaborating. And again, in looking for examples of when that's happening, 
I'm not going to go into great detail about each of these, but more just prepare for you, just a snippet, if you will, or a tapas kind of tasting of, of the work that's going on in the district. So in the area of critical thinking and problem solving, we started this um, year with uh, Kathy Hutter teaching coding at Council Rock. And so here we see students who, at a very young age, first grade and second grade, literally programming ro robots to follow their commands and learning a very simplistic coding language that they in turn can utilize those skills as they transfer to math and some of their other areas. Um, just this past week at the high school, Linda Palmer um, engaged with her students in what's known as a breakout EDU. So if you kind of think those escape rooms coupled with curriculum and building of skills and content. And so students were engaged in a series of problem solving activities that again, allowed them to learn new content and skills, but very highly motivated by that because they had to kind of work their way out of this puzzle, <coughs> if you will. And um, in talking to the students afterwards when Ms. Palmer asked them, they were all unanimously you know, talking about not only how intrigued and um, they were by that, but how hard they had worked. So it really spoke to their motivation to learn what she um, what she had set out for them. Um, in the area of creative creations and collaboration, um, we've started to have maker spaces. And you know, again, if you if you I know that the board is familiar, you know, with the modern media, and they talk about maker spaces. But maker spaces are really spots and areas where kids can actually create, they can invent, they can um, invent to solve um, unique problems or address unique situations, and then we in turn wrap that into research and writing and kind of building together this creation, if you will, of, um, of knowledge. Um, we've been doing some ge uh, student-generated podcasts at TCMS and our social studies department. And I know the board has seen some of the ebook creation that's gone on at both Council Rock and at French Road, as well as at the high school where um, Heather Bonadonna and Maria Cazzettos partnered in creating um, an electronic ebook for the nonfiction uh, um, unit of studies. Um, we've been using Schoology a lot. Again, I know the board's familiar with that term. It's our learning management system that really enables us to build somewhat of a virtual classroom. Many, many of our teachers now are um, using that as a way to facilitate not only the delivery of instruction for students, but a much easier way to somewhat personalize. So if a student is out sick or a student um, needs catch-up work or maybe perhaps is receiving services in the tutoring center, they, it's like they haven't missed class. They can continue to keep up um, with where the class is at the time. In the area of collaboration, um, we had this year some of our high school teachers um, engaged in an exchange with our, in, within our Israeli partnership where they actually went online and did video conferencing with classrooms in Israel. This was Colleen Hall and Eric Morris and Amy Malloy all in, um, had participated in that. We've also at the middle school had students um, Skype with authors in England. We've had them tour ancient Egyptian tombs and speak to archaeologists in ancient Egypt all through virtual um, video conferencing. Um, we also have had students engaged in writing conversations and collaborations across buildings, a high school to middle school or even a middle school to elementary school collaboration where the students aren't in the same space in real time but rather use some of the tools that we've provided with them to do virtual collaborations. Um, in the area of performance-based assessments, and this is one area that we really um, are starting to shine a light on because we know it's not just about those pencil and paper tests that we give people, we give our students, but rather more importantly, we're asking them to um, create um, projects and to engage in um, performances, if you will, to help us better understand not only what they've learned and are able to do. And so um, at the middle school, uh, um, Craig Dennison um, had his students in Spanish actually create Spanish videos where they were writing scripts and they were creating little movie vignettes um, with uh, stick figure um, conversations in Spanish. But through that, Craig was really able to see whether or not his students were understanding what it was he was trying to teach him, teach them. Um, we've had stop motion video in physics classes, again, as well as um, uh, digital newsletter generation. Um, you've heard uh, Matt speak of Seesaw often, and again, we're using that tool a lot to really archive, if you will, 
um, the learning of our students. And then you've heard me mention on a few occasions this notion of personalized learning, and that's a direction we're really kind of headed towards. Our ability to, you know, fine tune our instruction to meet the needs of individual students. We know in our blueprint we talk about rigorous coursework for all, and we've all said it on numerous occasions. All means all. But in order to really realize that, we're going to have to be able to pinpoint instruction and areas where individual students need assistance and then be able to deliver that in a very real-time fashion. And so this year we've been working with um, Sarah Feltis at the high school. We actually have an online PE class, believe it or not, that we're delivering to a set of students and, who are being very successful with it. Um, we've heard the business department talk about their virtual business enterprise and some of the other virtual reality um, experiences that they're providing for their students and then also again some virtual learning that we're allowing students to do through Schoology. So there's a lot going on within our walls um, and the thing that's a beauty is our teachers love learning from each other and so the teachers are almost like sponges because all it takes is a teacher to say you know what are you doing how did you do that I'd like to do that and literally within a week you know very often um, that transference of, uh, of excitement um, takes place. We are also starting to create this year learning spaces because we realize it's not just about the tools that we use but also about the spaces that we're giving students to um, to learn about, we're, to learn within, excuse me. We're really fortunate to have on our staff Maria Hewitt. Maria is the director of our teacher center but Maria by trade is a trained architect and so she really has taken it upon herself to do an in-depth study of the science around learning spaces and what that really means in a practical sort of way and so this year we have been piloting um, 12 classrooms where we've looked at the science behind the space and the flexibility of space to see you know how that can impact student learning in just a second I'm going to show you a video of the results of that but we really started out with that group having them um, establish the why are we doing this for those of you familiar with Simon Sinek and his work he says start with the why you know never start with the what but rather start with the why and through a course of professional development that the teachers participated in this summer they really came up with I think um, a really uh, foundational statement with regards to why we're transforming our classroom environment can have many ben benefits for our students and can promote 21st century skills to be successful in the 21st century students must be able to and this is where you saw some of the work before collaborate think critically, solve problems, and communicate effectively. And we're using not only our tools, but our spaces to be able to enhance that. Um, we really believe that by providing these purposeful classroom spaces, <coughs> our students will be developing these skills. So as I said, this year we have 12 classrooms, 14 participants. Teachers from every building came in the summer and did a pretty in-depth study about the science, and from that have transformed their learning environments that if everything goes as planned, I'm going to be sharing with you now. I am part of the Learning Spaces project this year, and we have all new furniture in our classroom. It used to be like over there, we, we didn't have that rug, and then we added that, and then we didn't have that over there. We have created three main spaces in the room, one being our gathering space, which is over by the smart board and rocking chair. We have watering holes, which are known as spaces for collaboration and small group work. And we also have cave spaces, which are more spaces where students work by themselves. I just try to find where nobody is working so then I can get all my work done and when I'm focused I don't hear anything. They have shown that they enjoy those spaces when they feel like they need some quiet or working with one other person. I like a nice quiet place to work so I can really concentrate on my work when I'm doing and I like sometimes a little table or to go over there with a the bench. Through my observations, I've been able to see how they define the spaces. So right behind me, these four tables, they used to be separated and there were two groups of two. 
And when we put the four spaces together, the students found a way to collaborate and have about 10 students working together at the same time. You'll notice that there are not names on any of the desks. Everyone chooses their learning space depending on what the work is for the day. I like it because we don't like we don't have to have a sign seat and work where it's really noisy so they can't concentrate on their work. I will typically ask the students where their best learning spot will be for the task that they are going to work on. I really like the lap desk because you can work in different places so they're not like just, you have to work on that rug. I really like the window because I can see like all the clouds and trees and birds. I have 14 desks for 22 students. They move around the room very independently. Typically they will choose to work together in a small space or work on the floor. It's really cool to have all this stuff because you can work now like whatever, wherever you want. Our classroom has changed instead of me being the teacher in the front of the classroom. My role has truly become being a facilitator for the students learning. They define the classroom and I am sometimes a guest in their space using this space and the technology that we have been provided. They show their learning in so many different ways that are truly unexpected and surprise parents and teachers alike, and I think the students too. My teaching has changed this year with the new classroom furniture in a few different ways. One way it's changed is it has allowed me to create more group-based collaboration focused projects. It's very flexible so I don't have to sit at one place at just one desk. I can sit in any of these places. It has also allowed me to focus on creativity and group work. So I've noticed that uh, my students are impacted because they're allowed to choose where they sit. It's changed my learning experience because you don't have to sit in like one desk and you can choose your spot every day. We talk a lot about uh, how you can do your best learning and what that looks like and they make a choice based on that. If like, you're with all your friends and you move to a different spot, you, it, it may help you focus more. I've seen them take a little more ownership over their learning and really reflect on how and what they need and they're allowed to move around so the different types of seats allow them for more or less movement depending on um, how they work best. It's been easier to learn since it's very flexible. So that's about it. This year there's been several changes going on in the classroom. Not only the learning spaces, but also the eighth graders have their tablets. So as far as some changes, the students are really starting to enjoy the tablets. There's much more accountability because the students have their work right in the tablet. They don't lose their paper or leave it at home. So there is that accountability. The changes as far as teaching comes involved. I can make changes and update my lesson very quickly rather than having to go to the copier and make all these different changes. I feel like there's sort of advantages to having tablets and what happens to like using paper. Like tablets, you have access to the internet and other things. The students are able to access the agenda and the class notes easily on the tablet. And then any pictures or chart on chart paper or student work that we have, I can easily take a picture of it, put it into the class notes so the students have it with them. Also, feedback is much quicker through me looking at their work right away after school, through email, giving them personal feedback with it. Then there's the furniture. The new furniture and the classroom is really cool because the oodles are spinny and they're colorful and it lightens the mood in the classroom. We've only had the furniture since January, so it's, it's not even been quite a little bit over three months. But I think the students have really adjusted to the changes in the classroom. We have like more of a creative perspective in this environment, as if it was like standard and difficult to work in the last environment we were in. They're given more of a controlled choice 
to be able to find an area that best suits them. The whole point is for them to be able to find the area that they can best learn at. So we're constantly moving around in the classroom. One of the things that I really like about the furniture is how flexible it is and how you can move them around to make different groups. We have several different types of groups that we do in the class. We have a fixed group for the entire unit. We have random groups and then we also have choice groups. So the students don't just come in, pick their spot and stay there for the entire class. Also, we have a lot more spaces um, on whiteboard for the students to showcase their work, be able to work in their group, learn how to show their work, and work together of what they want shown in the class. As far as my teaching changing, I think I'm giving the students more of a choice to be able to express themselves. It's easier to like type because it's very better, you know, you express yourself in different ways, you know? Yeah. I feel like it's more of an open setting in this classroom. As far as me standing up in the front of the room, that's very rare. I'm constantly going around the groups, it's easier. So I feel like we have more of a conversation, having them lead the discussion at times and share their work versus me being the teacher standing over them. I would say that my teaching hasn't really changed in the last couple of years. I would say honestly it's just the availability that we have, having students one-to-one -one makes it easier for us to take advantage of the technology and for students to have access to the technology. Definitely for the tablets they're easier to carry around and sometimes they might be a little annoying with the new technology but I definitely think it was an upgrade. The learning is a little bit more personalized, it's more student-centered. Um, we work on projects, uh, it's not a lecture-based class. In 80 minutes we're able to accomplish more than we would um, without the technology. It's more a change in the way that we're teaching. We're doing projects, it's more authentic assessment that we're focused on. And students have access to so much more information than they would if we were simply teaching in a lecture style or lecture-based kind of classroom. Much of the teaching is asynchronous. Students are gaining access to information from either the internet or from our web pages or from um, Microsoft Office products that we're using. And so in terms of um, being able to follow along with a the lesson, they can, they can stop and they can pause and they can go back to any information and re-access that information. And with all the chairs and the comfy couches and the desks, it makes the learning more comfortable and kind of a better environment to think and explore. I would say the, the biggest change with the furniture and with the technology, it's more a change in the way that we're teaching. And so it's the teaching that's changed and that's having the biggest impact on student learning. So a few years ago with the iPad Pilot, I found that having one-to-one -one technology in my classroom really changed the way that I was able to communicate with my students on a regular basis. I found myself being able to give much more feedback to students, finding ways to communicate with them more effectively, uh, not just within the classroom, but also outside the classroom as well. I have a dialogue with the students all the time. Not only do I still get to communicate with kids through the tablets and through all the technology that we have, but I also find myself just spending more time with my students. With the introduction of the new furniture in the classroom this year, one of the choices I made was to get rid of my teacher desks. The classroom is not separated into teacher space and student space, and as a result, I find myself with the students more often. I also have, I think, 28, 29, almost 30 places for kids to sit. I like that you can kind of choose where oh, you yeah. want to sit and it's like a different area, like you're probably feeling that too. I really liked the whiteboards because it has a lot of space so you can like kind of space out your thoughts more. I like how like this class is to be I want you to the standing desks are really nice because being sedentary for like six hours is pretty bad. There's always an empty desk for me to sit down with the students and work with them as opposed to work over them or work next to them. I can work with them directly, which has been really helpful. So as you can see, a lot of really good learning going on, a lot of really good thinking going on as a result of all the hard work that's being put in um, to this work. 
So another point of pride is our student programs. Um, right now we have at the high school uh, Genius Barons, which is um, a, a collection of students who are with us tonight. I'm going to turn it over to them in just a second, who are really honing their abilities to become technical support. I don't know if you saw right before the meeting, but they just fixed my iPhone. So if anybody has any problems, tonight's the night to share with them. We also have a group at the middle school, the Tech Avengers, who are kind of genius barons in the works. And um, without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Howard Ennis, and Howard's going to introduce his team to you. Hi everybody, I'm Howard Ennis, I'm the librarian at, uh, at the high school, and I'm happy to present some of our GenBar staff, known as Genius Barons, and then less formally as GenBar. Um, they are our student-operated uh, help desk at the high school, and uh, we have 14 on staff. We've sort of developed this program over the last few years, and uh, today I have Aditya um, Tangarella, I have Taya uh, Tariq, these are both seniors, they've been with the program for four years now. So I'm really glad that they've that they're here to present to you. Um, uh, you know, a lot of over the over time, you 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 know, high school students can become interested in different things and interests change. And I really appreciate the fact that Aditya and Tayeb have stuck with the program for a few years uh, from its infancy. And we also have Noam Ari and Ayesha Patel, who are two freshmen that joined uh, Genius Barons this year. And they will uh, tell you a little bit more about what's going on. We'll bring up uh, Aditya first to talk about the program vision. All right. So the Genius Parents program began in November of 2014 at the Nice Kate Conference. Basically, it's a conference for uh, teachers and technology educators. Nice Kate stands for New York State uh, something for <laughs> um, for technology education, um, and it's in the Riverside Convention Center, and it's been happening for a very long time. So in the 2014 meeting, um, we had this idea for, a, uh, because of the one-to-one -one involvement, uh, the one-to-one -one technology program where each student gets their own tablet or their own computer, um, we decided that there would be areas where uh, kids would have problems or kids would need kind of assistance because we all know that technology doesn't always work the way it's intended and there are some flaws so we decided to create like a program, a kind of tech support club to rectify those problems. Uh, and we decided that also the easiest way for students to interact and get help would be with other students, like the same age as them. So we had the idea to create the Genius Parents Club uh, in order to support students and staff as well. Uh, we help teachers and faculty with their uh, technology issues. Um, so basically, we use student power to combine that with, uh, how did you say? Um, basically, we use students to uh, create ideas and solutions for problems. Um, also, the NiceGate Conference, uh, the Microsoft Innovative Educator uh, Program. Uh, some of us have, is, have gotten training from the Microsoft Innovative Educator Program which is basically a national thing for teachers and other uh, school administrators and stuff um, to create. Basically, they get a training for Microsoft Op products, like we use Office 365, which is basically a suite of uh, online apps, like Word, PowerPoint, Excel, along with OneNote, Outlook, and other apps. Um, to basically, the Microsoft Educator uh, certification, basically, it's, uh, it's a way to get certified by using the apps and uh, basically just get a feel for them and help other people with them. So that was basically the idea for the Genius Parents program. So in, <clears throat> in 2015, <coughs> we were supporting the, the high school's library and rolling out the laptops. In 2016, we helped out the middle school and um, the eighth graders with their devices. And in 2017, we went back to the high school. Um, we've been recruiting members through posters, <coughs> club fairs, morning show, in every way that we can. Um, we've been using a software called Gen Yes, which helps us document our hours and um, 
And uh, we've been using Gen Yes to um, manage our time and tickets. Um, we've been having regular meetings two times per month so we can stay on track. We've been coordinating with District Tech. And uh, we've been also using the district's desk ticket system. So if um, there's a ticket that they feel that we could help, they'll send it to us. So the expectations for GenBar is that we help out whenever there's help, mostly through dates like this, when we roll out the tablets or just in our shifts when we're there in case students come in so there's always someone there to help because that's a problem. You don't know when problems are going to occur. You need to always make sure that there's a way for them to help them when there are problems. Uh, but alongside, since there's not always problems, we try to make tutorials and make content for our teachers and to go more in depth on everything. This is from, we're working on making videos on junk tech along with product testing such as cases for the tablets this year. We're also looking at other things, and we're all documenting this in Gen Yes. Um, we've been really successful with helping students and teachers this year. Um, at our student-run help desk, we help them. They come in during free periods um, just to ask us questions. Um, at the beginning of the year, we handed out tablets to um, all the current freshmen, and we've been helping them with like a first line of defense with their um, tech issues. And then earlier this year, we attended Nice Kate and presented to um, the people there just to show kind of what we do. Um, a few weeks ago, we had a faculty conference event to help um, teachers integrate the technology into their classrooms and um, just help them learn how to use it more efficiently. And we've been doing for the past few weeks, and it's still going on right now, um, helping teachers shift all their files into OneDrive so it's easier for them to access and they won't lose them as easily. Um, some of us are earning internship credit and community service credit for um, our work too. Yeah, so, you know, to make it clear, these kids are giving up time during their day, during their very valuable freeze um, to uh, work in the library. We have a little office for them there and again, be the first line of defense for uh, problems as they appear. Here are some of our students, uh, Jenny S., uh, presenting at uh, NiceGate earlier this year in November. And then a couple of weeks ago, we made a, did a field trip to Council Rock and helped some of the teachers over there uh, with moving their files to OneDrive. Um, it's been a pleasure working with, uh, with GenBar. It's really been uh, quite an interesting journey so far. I do want to make sure I thank uh, De you know, Debbie Baker, Mike Lehner, uh, Dr. Hall, Mike Pincelli, uh, Eric Jordan, Danielle Edmonds, and uh, Randy Graff for their support, and um, and for the programs. And you know, people have asked me, you know, where are these students heading? Um, I've seen enormous growth, you know, working with with uh, these guys over the last few years. But it's interesting to note that uh, both Aditya and uh, Tayeb are heading off to college to study computer science. So I'm hoping that. You know, some of this experience and especially the customer service experience, talking to people, communicating, uh, working through problems uh, in a live setting has been a valuable experience for them. And even getting up here to present to you today has been a valuable experience. So thank you for your time today. Do you have any questions for the Gen Bar? The obvious question, Howard, third, thank you very much, Howard, yeah, for coming, for helping to facilitate all this. The first obvious question is, and Dr. McGowan already whispered in my ear, no. Mm -hmm. We want someone assigned to the board. And Kim also, the board clerk and the board together. But I guess, uh, and I know Debbie probably has some wrap up, but this is such a fantastic thing in, at so many levels. You know, we've been talking a lot recently, the board and our leadership team, about messaging better to our community on a regular basis about all the great things that happen on a daily basis in Brighton. I think our residents appreciate what a great school district we are, but I think some of the detail of what happens every single day sort of gets lost in all of the things that happen every single day. But this is such a testimony and a tribute to our students and their initiative 
uh, really starting on your own, and the four of you representing the entire group tonight, we are so appreciative of the efforts that you have made and the assistance that you have provided to your fellow students, to your teachers, and the synergy of the entire process allowing us as a district to advance instructional technology use. You know, I was the board member on our K-12 Instructional Committee way back when, Debbie's nodding her head, when we began talking about how we would roll out instructional technology and devices and leading to how classrooms would look, we talked about that earlier, and, and learning spaces, and it is such, I, I guess, a, a proud moment for us, but we should all revel in this, that has all come together in such a great way benefiting the entirety of what we do every single day. So I hope that the four of you and the rest of the group, uh, I know you'll benefit in the long run from your experience, but thank you for your service, but also for bringing forward ideas and allowing them to grow and innovating them continually along the way. So just a wonderful celebration of, of Brighton students. And the more that we see of you, the better off we are. So thank you very much. Mark's right, I do want to wrap up a little bit. A um, couple things, one, to thank Howard again for his leadership of the group. As we know, you know, it really takes a, a caring adult to reach out and say, I'll be the person to kind of be the shepherd and corral the kids and um, makes all the difference in the world. So Howard, thank you. A little bit of an anecdote about the Gen Bar kids. So I think many of you know, because you've attended the NiceGate conference and you know my um, affiliation with it. Is so NiceGate for the official record is? New York State Computer and Technology Educators. Really? We're going to test soon. Anyway, you're close. You got most of the, the letters. Anyway, um, so last year, the kids were loose on the floor, and as you can imagine, any kind of tech conference, there's about 190 or so booths, and they are trying out like all the devices and all the other <coughs> things. So afterwards, and I'm walking up and down the, the vendor floor, and the vendors would stop me and they're like, were those your kids? Oh my God, they asked such good questions. They really gave us some really solid feedback, and it just was such a point of pride to me, and I'm like, well, yeah. They're brain kids, right? Yeah. We would expect no less of them. But anyway, to your tribute, they, they, these guys were great. I mean, I, again, they, they mentioned very quickly about the um, innovator, um, Microsoft innovator educator. Again, they didn't toot their horn enough. They are the only students, I believe, across the country are certified. They threw Microsoft on its ear because Microsoft actually certifies so that the people who are certified can actually go out and be trainers. They weren't prepared to have under 18 students to be certified. And so they were working with their legal team to figure out how that could happen. So again, you know, just a real test. Broke Microsoft, test. basically. Yes. Yeah. 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 Congratulations. <laughs> so just to really wrap up, I mean, again, tonight was, you know, just a few minutes of all the great stuff going on. And I know the board knows, but you're always welcome. The teachers would welcome you into their classrooms for visitations, just to kind of share real time and, and talk to the kids. Um, because it really is an innovative place and a pleasure to be here. So yeah. thank you. Well, thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. thank you to everybody. And, and, and I would extend uh, just for a moment uh, the work that you mentioned, the four vignettes that you showed in the classroom innovation that has been ongoing. Really, we know some of those folks have been doing that on their own for years. And m more teachers join in all the time. Uh, we were able to do some amounts of money and there were some grants and things like that. But one of the beauties of that, looking forward for us, is with the K-12 facilities project now really getting underway. All of that work, along with the technology work, is really going to allow us, as we roll out the new section of Council Rock, really that whole building will be essentially new interior, uh, renovated classrooms, different space, different, different learning environments, and as we roll through the rest of our buildings, to learn and take what we've learned and, and move that through the district in a way that we know it's been proven and we're ready to go with it. And it's such a great thing to see all of that coming together. So thank you so much for your report tonight, for all the folks who've stepped out and done it, and, and especially, like you say, our students and listening to our students and their work is the best thing that there is. So thank you. But I wasn't really kidding about that person assigned to the board. Well, I about that, so. we'll figure out a way. Uh, continuing great reports and great work. Uh, we'll have our we have our principal reports tonight, as is uh, customary at our education meeting. So we're going to start out tonight with Council Rock. 
Uh, what we're going to start on. What we got up there? Oh, <laughs> I don't know. It's too late. No call. It's too late. <laughs> no call. Right on. Comes the rocks on. <laughs> I, I never know. Sometimes we have an order, sometimes we don't. So finally I decided to start. Matt Tavis, well. Thank you. So Rob Thomas leaned to me and said, I hope Council Rock's first after that with the kids showing up. And I'm like, thanks a lot. So, so I have two pictures of kids, hopefully. So um, great to be back. Uh, happy spring, officially. So we are celebrating Earth Week uh, this whole week. And this year, our focus is on water. If you remember back to November, we had our um, whale project here, so we're connecting back to that. Um, and we are celebrating water, and actually we kick off a uh, coin drive this Friday at our um, Earth Week celebrations and assembly, where we are hopefully going to raise enough to adopt a humpback whale, um, and then we'll get to name it. The goal is if we raise enough, we get to name it, and that's what we'll vote for on voting day, uh, the name that we want to name, uh, name. So I'm hoping that we can do it. But we already started, and Kathy Hutter has organized with the second grade classrooms. One of the big questions that they've asked, um, because we learned it in November, was how much pollution and plastic is affecting the ocean. And they are taking it what what can we do at Council Rock? So they are keeping track of how many straws we use because straws are a huge uh, thing that end up in the ocean. And how many straws do we use at Council Rock? They're taking baseline data this week and they're going to report back and then they're going to brainstorm ways that we can reduce just that one part of the plastic use that we have at Council Rock. So stay tuned for that. So they stole my thunder, but the Genius Barons were at Council Rock and it was a really awesome experience on so many levels. They didn't talk about this, but so great for my teachers. My teachers um, don't often get to see because we finish, you know, we're unique. We finish at second grade and these kids move on. And it's hard for them to get the connection of how awesome these young people and individuals get to be as they get older. So it was just a great reunion of former teachers and former students together. And then the students just totally taking <clears throat> command and taking over their devices and typing for the teachers and the teachers saying, go ahead, show me what to do. And um, a lot of learning, a lot of laughing, but really great things. So thanks to them. I know they only one is left. So thank you. So um, our extended studies uh, has done, again, another project and fundraiser. They have adopted four different local agencies and created cards as a fundraiser to donate. Um, the students using habits of mind and all kinds of great things to, again, give back to the areas around them. And then spring. So, hello spring, goodbye winter. It was a long time coming. I'm glad when I prepared this, I wasn't sure it was actually going to be here, but I feel like I can say it now. All around Council Rock, it's like we've been waiting and waiting and they've been creating for it. So, just some great examples, uh, some awesome poetry and writing, all celebrating spring. Our kindergartners have done an uh, author study of Mo Willems. If you don't know Mo Willems, you've got to go out and get books. So this was the kids writing who their favorite Mo Willems character was, whether it was Piggy or whether it was Elephant. Um, second graders did this incredible writing um, about the best part of me. If you have a chance, if you walk through Council Rock, they're just so touching. So this was his belly was the best part of him. Um, it's been a long time since I've been able to say that, but uh, <laughs> you know, her eyes were the best part and really the reasons why they believe. So it was a great self-reflection, but incredible writing project for our second graders. Upcoming uh, events at Council Rock, we've got a meeting with the principal that is not on the calendar. We added it. We didn't have an April uh, meeting with the principal, but my PTSA co-chairs asked for it. Library, music, and art are actually going to present, and it's tomorrow morning. Uh, they're going to just share a little bit about what they do uh, and kind of give a little glimpse into their, into their uh, classrooms. We have a May meeting with the principal that is combined with Dr. Rio uh, to talk about placement and transitioning, uh, and that is at noon at the main office conference room at Frez. So we're trying to start to get my second grade parents over there to see what the, the big Frez is like. So, uh, And then starting May 1st through May 18th, our second graders will be taking map testing. I've sent some of that information home uh, since this is the first year that many of them will do that. Um, that uh, it's just a easy, it, my information's in the tap and times, but it's not an assessment that takes a long time. It's on the computer. Kids actually find it relatively fun and painless. 
Uh, and then my first grade students are taking a field trip to Tinker Nature Park May 8th, 9th, and 10th. Um, and more information will come from your individual teacher for that. Any questions? Great. Thank you very much, Matt. We sure. appreciate it. We hope you're right and optimistic and uh, spring is really here for the good now. So May it thank be. you so much. Next up, we'll hear from French Road. And French Road is night at the Red Wings game tonight, yes. correct, Deanna? So, so you, you get me. You missed that. <laughs> I missed that. But Dr. Rio is down there with the group. So what a great night. You're, uh, and the rain's going to hold off till later, so it should yep. be fine. So a great night to go to the ball game. So Welcome, and thank you for reporting. Good to be back. Um, here's some updates from French Road. So a few weeks ago, we had our best turnout yet for a movie night, and we have really enjoyed collaborating with PTSA around soliciting more volunteers. We've got people in the hallways. We've got people working um, the, the concessions outside. Um, it's been fabulous. Um, we're really, really excited about our first ever second grade family movie night. So we've been, just as Mr. Tappan said, we've been looking at opportunities to bridge our connections, bringing Council Rec folks over to French Road as much as possible, getting people familiar with things, and PTSA actually worked with us to come up with the idea around a second grade movie night. So will there be a movie night just for second graders and their families to come and experience French Road? And that'll be June 5th, movie title to be determined, but we're really excited about that coming up. So we just last week uh, had our first of two open houses and ice cream socials. So last week on Thursday, we had third grade and half of our fifth. And this coming Thursday night, we'll have fourth grade and the rest of our fifth grade. And as you can see, Dr. Rio in there jumping in in Mr. Koch's class, um, she's always good for a good photo bomb um, in one of the photo booths there in the classroom. So um, just also like Council Rocks and writing around in our school and in the hallways, and here's from Mrs. Shank's class. This really focused on uh, narrative writing and taking a look at the text, the Lorax, but then also putting their own twist on that piece as well. And those are on display right now outside her classroom. Some really great writing pieces there. Mr. Koch's class took an extension of the third grade weather unit, and they produced some informational videos each on different topics related to weather. Someone maybe focused on hurricanes, someone for, focused on tornadoes. So I invite you to go to our website under videos and check them out because they are all there and they're all really great and all student driven and, and created, which is awesome. Um, our fourth grade history day. So many of you may be familiar what used to be known as Colonial Day, but with the adoption of the new social studies standards, we took a look at some of the traditions that we had at French Road that were based in social studies, but what do we need to take a deeper, closer look at, and really what linked better with the social studies curriculum. So fourth graders, and there's some snapshots there, um, took a look at food, culture, traditions, uh, focusing a lot around its connection, now Mrs. Jacqueline, you keep me on my toes here, around its connection also to local areas here in New York State. Big excitement, this was just this past Friday, so lots of fun around our fourth grade history day. Um, some more writing that's around uh, our school. So Mrs. Lanavaro's class, all of our fifth graders actually, one of the ELA common units is around a featured article looking at evaluating different feature articles through magazines, different texts, what are the um, different criteria that needs to be in place for a feature article. And then <coughs> the students wrote their own, and they were given the freedom to select the topic of their choice. So you might see a feature article that looks like a magazine article about cats, snowboarding, peoples and places, all student driven, um, and some fine pieces of work. All of our fifth graders will do that, and those are currently right now on display outside of Mrs. Lanavaro's classroom. Way back in March, which now does seem like way back in March, um, we were able to host two different schools, McMahon School of Dance and Goodwin School of Dance. We had a morning assembly and an afternoon assembly, both featuring Fred's students. So the whole school got to experience, whether they came in the morning or afternoon, some great Irish dancing, but also showcasing some of our Fred's students and former Fred's students. A wonderful time-honored tradition here at French Road, the New Horizons Band Concert. Thank you so much to Debbie Parker for all her arrangement and organization. Um, as you can see, our French Road students up there along with members of the New Horizon Band. It's a great opportunity for students to interact with a guest artist um, in a small, more intimate setting. We also had uh, Mr. Parker came and played, Mrs. Jags came and played, um, Mr. Como came back and he played with a group of kids too as well. So it was a great opportunity for 
kids to see adults who still continue their love of their instrument and how they play and how they also give back to the community. In fact, I was just talking to Dr. McGowan today about a student who was so excited for this event. He was dressed to his best. Um, and at the end of the evening, he really connected with the guest artist. He's, he's one of our percussionists. And he kept looking for different excuses to help this man, um, whether it be collecting his music or bringing, he kept looking for all these different opportunities to still stay with that guest artist. People had long gone, they were on their way for ice cream or home, and he was not gonna leave. He wanted to stay, stay with that. And to see this student make a connection, um, and he's found his little niche and his success with that was, was really heartwarming. And it was cute to see it was, you know, kind of had to bring the hook of it's time to go home. But he really enjoyed that connection with, with, this, with that guest artist. Um, another extension of our weather unit at third grade, Lisa Wittick, our e &L teacher, reached out to Scott Hetchko and to everyone's surprise and admiration, two days later he showed up in her classroom um, around the focus of, of the weather unit, but what was so great and unique is that he took the time and spent a lot of time with the class, I'm looking at you Beth too because I, I know you know about this, mm -hmm. to get to know the students and interact with the students. Even though the topic was around weather, he spent more time talking to our students about their backgrounds and where they came from and um, their contributions to that classroom community. And then if you go on our website as well, you'll be able to see how he was able to show the kids how to make a cloud. I'm not going to try to explain that, but I encourage you to go check it out on this website. Mm -hmm. So we are really excited to announce that this year will be our first ever, first hopefully eventually annual beginning of yearbook uh, production and publication. And this is our student council taking a look <coughs> at some of the artwork that has been submitted, whether it's going to be the cover page, a title page, uh, the back of the yearbook there. And we're going to be showcasing these and students throughout the school will have the opportunity to vote and select the different pieces of artwork. And so here's our student, student council there taking a look at the different submissions that have come in. Some great, great representations of our school. It's going to be really hard to choose. So kudos go out to our school counselor who joined us this year, Mrs. Opet, who's been working very closely with Mrs. Jagodinsky and Mrs. Jacqueline's class, really around kindness. And she has collaborated with those teachers and with the children, focusing on some the creation of kindness projects. Some students have created PowerPoints that will be shown in the cafeteria around different ways of demonstrating kindness. Um, and these three girls in the upper right-hand corner happen to have, not planned is what I understand, uh, they were wearing t-shirts all with uh, very unique and very appropriate kindness quotes for the day. Um, you see the children in the middle, they have created a, a kindness box where you can re reach in and grab a kindness quote. So if you need a little pick-me-up, um, different ways that they've created some projects that can be placed around the school, including some other children who like in the upper left hand corner created some posters that will be on display as well. So kudos to the staff and the children for that great collaboration around kindness. So some upcoming events, obviously you know Dr. Rio's having a great time right now at Frontier Field, great weather. We have, as I mentioned before, Thursday night is another open house. Um, we will have the opportunity next week to celebrate one of our own teachers, uh, Robin Lackenby, for a PTSA lifetime me membership but also um, Adele Linton, who now is over at Council Rock, who used to teach at French Road as well. So as you heard, some upcoming um, PTSA meetings. Um, and our 203, we're really focusing greatly on continuing our communication with uh, second grade families, helping them get used to French Road, getting to know the lays of the land there. Um, just today, I was with some uh, of my staff there. We were visiting some classrooms, getting to know some children there. And we thank Council Rock for their hospitality today volunteer reception coming up and lots of concerts coming up along our way and then our human rights day in may which is another way that we have taken a look at the social studies curriculum um, way back when it used to be american history day and we really have developed that day to really focus in on social studies and ela curriculum as well so uh, thanks so much for having me here tonight hopefully i'll be able to pull up oh no this is where i always goof up Thank you very okay, much. Mr. Jennifer. Thomas, you can do it. You do it so much better than I do. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. And we appreciate you taking one for our team tonight and being here. So thank you so much. Next a genius up. baron, I am not. But hey, I can get my you said PowerPoint that yourself. displayed. Did that. Good evening. Bob Good Thomas, to see everybody. Baltimore's Middle School. I'm sorry, appropriate uh, introduction. There you go. Thank you very much, Bob.
I was so glad that French Road did not report on their uh, landfill diversion this month. It makes ours the best. Uh, and our sixth grade, the our sixth reported. grade is leading the way for our entire school, probably because of the training that they've had at French Road. Uh, we need the eighth grade to get a little bit more involved in participation. But our uh, recycling club has been helping out too, and that's shown, uh, helped us with a lot of our improvement. But the uh, kitchen staff is blowing everybody away. Uh, they're doing a great job there with that, that uh, total savings of 77.8%. Uh, our E3 fair was at RIT. And, and again, this, this year we started off late. Liz Hookway, a math teacher, joined in to lead in Joe Priola's uh, absence. But actually, Joe even came back to help him out, too. The kids did a great job. And so many high school students came down to help us in the preparation and at the event. I'd like to thank them uh, especially, but our kids are so proud of the work that they did and uh, happy to be competing. Uh, we have a team of National Science Bowl students who won the regionals and Thursday fly all expenses paid to D.C. to compete in nationals. And we're so proud of these kids and uh, Jason Birch, pictured here on the bottom left, is actually creating a video of the experience to put on the former Channel 12. <laughs> 1303. 1303, thank you. Uh, Leah Malik from uh, the Holocaust Survivor Group came and spoke to our students in ELA classes in conjunction with their reading of Night. A phenomenal story, what a great person and such a valuable experience for our 8th graders in all of their ELA class to hear from Leah and other Holocaust survivors. Uh, our students participated and were awarded the Alice B. Wilson Literacy, or Literary Award. Uh, they are uh, pictured here in Mrs. Hippert's class. They told me, Mr. Thomas, we wrote, we didn't read. I said, well, gra grab a book, smile, we're gonna take your picture for the board. And they were <laughs> happy to do so. Uh, Stacey Kugel and other teachers uh, had a week long of activity called Start With Hello, which is a way to reach out to students that don't seem to have as many connections by their own peers. They found uh, kids in the cafeteria that might not have be, are be sitting with as many friends. They did different activities. They left inspirational quotes on lockers. And it was a really nice way to reach out to each other and uh, help uh, kids that may not have the connection that some of the other kids do. Our seventh grade DC trip was cold, but six bus full, uh, bus loads full of kids and staff and parents uh, made the trip for three days. Uh, really interesting and every year we do something different but uh, going to the African American Museum of History and Culture for the second time now since it's been open is one of the best parts of the entire trip and it means a lot to the kids. Our only wish is that we could stay there longer. Everything seems to be so quick uh, when we get to the to the sites. While most of the kids went on the trip, some students that chose not to go on the trip had some great experiences to be part of too thanks to Jenny Twilliger and other teachers at the middle school. Uh, one of the highlights was going to see the, uh, the Diary of Anne Frank at Jiva, uh, participating in science experiments, and even got to go bowling one of the days. So they had, a, they had a good time. In conjunction with the D.C. trip, we've partnered with Honor Flight, and they speak to our students before we go to D.C. Then our students, upon their return, write letters to the veterans, which the veterans then receive during mail call on their flight back from a weekend trip in D.C. The veterans are so moved and the kids are so excited to welcome them back in the airport on Sunday. It's one of the most touching experiences I've been part of at the middle school. And veterans this week have been writing back to our students and they've also stopped in to see our kids and thank them for their participation in this event. It's a really great connection we have with the community. Uh, we also had an Al Siegel fundraiser with a community service club, raised just over $300 for the Al Siegel Center Community of Agencies and uh, Nate from the center came and helped with the collection and got the kids excited about participating in another community service event, thanks to Katie Falter. Uh, spring sports participation is a really high percentage of uh, participants. Almost half of seventh and eighth graders are on the spring sport. About 100 of them were out back tonight in the track meet against HFL, and they had a, a great time, and thank goodness some great weather for a change. Uh, pretty equal distribution of boys and girls, 7th and 8th grade, and a lot of students competing in high school level sports too. Thanks to all the coaches and, and for all the parents for their support of these programs. Uh, the third quarter ended last Friday and we're off and running with the fourth quarter and uh, 
urge everyone to check out Parent Portal, keep track of how your kids are doing, and contact teachers, counselors, and administrators as necessary. Uh, our friends, families, we still have about 60. We're waiting to hear from you to find out what your foreign language selection is for sixth grade. Please let us know as soon as you can as we start building our schedule for next year. Orientations for friends, families are on May 23rd at 4.30 or 6.30. You want to come to one of those one-hour presentation with your kids uh, to hear more about the school and to meet some of our seventh graders who will soon be eighth grade mentors in our TCMS Strong program as they conduct building tours. And Friday night, our eighth graders are going to go over to the high school and visit Miss Mosier and the others there to have an activity night similar to what our fifth graders do at the middle school. It's a fun chance for the students to see the high school in a, a low-key, fun atmosphere, use the pool, the gym, have some music, and some food Friday night. Other upcoming events tomorrow, we'll have a PTSA meeting with the principal, and Dr. Whitney Rapp will be presenting on executive functioning skills and how to help students with those skills, a really important piece of being successful at the middle school. Uh, what Dr. Rapp presented to this group last year as well, and she does a phenomenal job. I mentioned the 8th grade activity night. Our math assessments start next week. Our PTSA Honorary Lifetime Member uh, Award recipient is Judy Tarasek, our school nurse, so please uh, come by and, and watch that if you can. The 11th and 12th of May, Mary Poppins Jr. will be at Brighton High School, and we have about 60 students participating in our spring musical. So please come by. It's going to be a great show. And finally, on May 12th in the morning, Saturday from 9 to noon, we'll participate in the Brighton Townwide Clean Sweep. Uh, the middle school students will meet at French Road, get some food, then we'll board buses, clean up around the community, head back, get some more food, and then head home for the day with a brand new t-shirt that won't be as clean as it was when it was handed to them Saturday morning. That's it from the middle school. Wonderful. Thanks, Rob. Thank you very much, Rob. We appreciate uh, all the looks, uh, look inside uh, the building and all the different student activities. So thank you so much. And we also uh, welcome now uh, Assistant Principal Teresa Mosier from the high school because Tom is away also. And Tom is, I believe, in D.C. as part of his... National Award? This is, uh, I think, part of the Blue Ribbon. Oh, is it part of the Blue yeah, Ribbon? Yeah, so um, actually I was going to say he was in the Bahamas taking a vacation. Uh, <laughs> there goes do that. that. Um, he's actually uh, participating um, as part of a think tank with the U.S. Department of Education. Oh, okay. Uh, rethinking the instructional day. That's fantastic. So, yeah, it sounds like some good things are going on. He reached out to us today. So. Good, good for him. He can take... Good information and bring good information back. So thank yes, you. Yes, and thank you for uh, for coming this evening and presenting. Yes, absolutely. I appreciate the opportunity. We're going to see flex period nationwide now. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the first thing I want to talk about, some things happened at the high school. Our Citizens of the World Club, they engage a lot of service projects throughout <coughs> the year. Um, this past March, on a Sunday, they gave up their time to feed the homeless at the First Methodist Church. Um, our super and con, con, superintendent's conference day was a big hit. It was the second part of our diversity training. We had an outstanding panel of students, and I just can't say enough about uh, their ability to be well-spoken, mm -hmm. articulate, but above all, brave and courageous to sit in front of all of their teachers and talk about their experiences at Brighton High School around diversity. Um, so they provided their opinion, but also examples of things that, that they experienced throughout their um, life with us at Brighton High School. The second part of that, we had small group breakout sessions with staff. We took time to reflect upon those conversations um, that took place with students. We had an opportunity during that panel discussion to have Q&A with the students as well. And then we ran um, within small groups through case scenarios like tabletop exercises of real situations related to diversity um, that took place either at Brighton High School or within the district. And the overarching <coughs> question was, what would you do? And we processed it as a group. It was a tremendous, um, tremendous activity and great dialogue. And then we ended that portion of the day with asking teachers to write out a piece of paper something that as a result of these discussions or as a result of this training, 
um, an action item, something they would do differently or commit to doing next year. And it was only for them. They wrote it on a piece of paper. We put it in an envelope. And then in September, we'll give it back to them as a reminder. And then, you know, of course, we followed up with a survey because we wanted feedback on how to, if we engage in these um, activities moving forward around diversity, which is very important to us, how can we make it better? And what did staff think of the activities overall? Um, overwhelmingly, uh, we received very good feedback. Um, everybody thought the day was well organized, thoughtful, meaningful, and um, the overarching theme was we want to continue, continue these conversations because they're meaningful, valuable, and um, you know something everybody desires to engage in moving forward. Our key club. Um, every year they attend a statewide conference, um, as they did again this year. Um, Catherine Callahan, um, one of our uh, students, was fortunate enough to present at the workshop. She presented um, on a million thanks, and this was one activity that we engaged students in during our Brighton Day of Caring, where all of our students wrote letters with positive, encouraging thoughts um, to men and women in service. And so Catherine was fortunate enough to um, be chosen to present at the conference there. And then congratulations to Natalie Vuitton. She was actually selected to be the Lieutenant <coughs> Governor for the Key Club for the State, uh, which is a pretty big honor. And then um, congratulations, I guess, to the whole Key Club because they got their paperwork in early and it was perfectly done and they submitted their dues early. So. Um, they gave them an award for that, so congratulations to them. And unfortunately, uh, Maya and Michaela were actually here tonight. They're gone now. Two amazing young ladies that received the Urban Suburban Pretzels Award this year. This, is, this award is given to students uh, that are good role models, demonstrate citizenship. They're very involved in our school community, just tremendous young ladies if you know them. They are involved in basketball, track, BSU, and various other clubs. So, unfortunately, uh, they weren't here right now, so we could give them a round of, a uh, round of applause. But I can't say enough nice things about them. And um, Galaxy um, this year engaged in their annual fundraiser as well. They were able to raise $836. We had 123 students participate in over 20 uh, tremendous performances. So um, a nice job with them. They're overseen by um, Jed Coons and uh, Jen Wheeler's involved as well. So congratulations to them with their fundraiser. Pizza with the Chief was a big hit. As you can see by the pictures, we had a great turnout. Chief Henderson came in and spoke to students about school safety and um, took the time to answer their questions and engage them in dialogue. Uh, there was a lot of positive conversation and students had the opportunity to provide um, Chief Anderson with some feedback and suggestions, one of which was um, dialogue around the foot patrols throughout the high school and students expressing their interest and in really taking the time and the police officers taking the time to get to know them as individuals and stopping and talking with them and connecting with them. Um, so great dialogue, um, you know, with that activity as well. And as you can see by the smiles on the faces, therapy dogs in the high school are a huge hit. They have visited the high school two times this year so far, and you can see some of the names of the dogs. Various locations throughout the high school, and because it has made what we feel such a positive impact, we're getting um, such good feedback from students and staff alike, everybody wants to see the dogs. Um, that our care and wellness um, committee is working with Dr. Hall to bring them in during exam week and trying to set up times and locations so that they can be there a half hour in the morning prior to exams and then in the afternoon a half hour prior to students starting the next round of exams hoping that will help them go into their exams with a good calm mindset. So we're really excited about that. <clears throat> Brighton Day of Action, we had a lot going on this day, and anybody that um, was fortunate to be there, you saw a lot of wonderful things going on. Just, I can't say enough about our students and their engagement in civic duty and 
in standing up for the things that, that they believe in. And they were <coughs> so, so well spoken. So we started out with activities in the gymnasium throughout the day. You know, um, students could choose to, to email or write letters to elected officials about their feelings about gun violence, school violence, um, and expressing their thoughts about moving toward nonviolence and actions against gun violence. Um, clubs were very involved. We had speakers from Friends of Rachel, BSU, GSA, ASA. Those students were very well spoken. They covered all of those topics and then engaged in a remembrance of the victims of the Columbine shooting as well. We also had um, an empty chair presentation. We had several um, presenters during that time. Our own Hannah Newlands, um, Student Executive Council President, spoke. And she spoke to her peers just about remembering to engage in safe behaviors as we're heading into the end of the school year with all those senior and junior activities, those times that we're most concerned for our students and our children um, as they engage in celebrations. And another powerful presentation was from a parent um, that la lost her son in a car accident. And it really touched the students. It really made them think. But her overarching message was make good decisions, take care of yourself, take care of each other. And um, I, I just thought it, it was very powerful and a, a great presentation overall for students. And then lastly, our climate, climate club had a rally right after school. They had a pretty good turnout at that as well. And uh, these students and uh, students and adults alike talked about ways everyone could get involved um, in efforts to eliminate problems around pollution, war, poverty, and injustice. Uh, so just a lot of great events on that day. And we have just wrapped up the third quarter. It's hard to believe. So um, you can't go through a presentation without looking so at some of our data. Um, so I'd like to just compare your... 2011 and 12 and the great progress we've made to 20 to this year um, and the reduction in, in the reduction of course failures uh, it's a tremendous drop if you just compare this year and last year um, you can see it's staying relatively the same but I do believe we've still made a lot of progress and then going to our next slide which is quarter two um, our seniors and our <coughs> freshmen have had a reduction in course failures over quarter two um, but our juniors and sophomores have um, made a little bit of a hike, but overall percentage-wise, um, we're staying relatively in the same place, but much better than we were at our worst time in 2011-2012. And my last slide, um, all of our upcoming events. Um, May is a very busy time at the high school and, you know, rushing into June. We have a junior prom this weekend at St. John Fisher. And then you can see, you know, following close behind, Senior Bash, Banquet, Spring Fest celebration. We wrap it up with the awards ceremony June 1st, and then we head right into our graduation ceremony. So a lot of really exciting, busy times coming up, but a lot of celebration of the hard work that students have um, accomplished and done at the high school, you know, specifically our seniors. Any questions? Thank you so much, Teresa. Right, thank you. Thank, and thank you for the level of detail on the um, last week's activities, you know, with our students and uh, exercising their, uh, I would say their right to free speech, but yeah. really exercising their ability to communicate. Yeah. And I think we've, uh, we've talked about that quite a bit going back now a while, and um, we're so proud of our students and all of our adults around them. and. Uh, you know, one of the things today that strikes me in all of our principal reports, we talked about it with the Genius Parents Group, but today it seems like an inordinate number of looks into classrooms and specific variety of things that all of our kids are engaging in with our teachers, you know, and the other adults in their buildings. And, and that's what it's all about every day. And uh, we seem to be in a period of time with so much activity all the time. We all feel it. But our kids lead us and, and show the way, and it's just such a wonderful thing. So yeah, thank you for great. sharing all of those activities at the high school. Absolutely, you're welcome. I can't believe prom is Saturday, but thanks for reminding us of that. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, a couple of items of business we have remaining this evening, if we could, folks. Uh, first of all, a motion to approve 
the TCMS Social Studies textbook recommendation. So moved. Second. Moved by Julene and seconded by uh, Karen. Uh, we have this material previously supplied to us by Dr. Baker. We also have had the book available to us. Uh, this is a new grade 7 and 8 U.S. history book and pretty timely with the review of all of our social studies curriculum anyway and the new social studies standards at the state level. So uh, does anybody have any questions or comments of Debbie or anything further on this tonight? No, I just have to say when I read through the material, I was really impressed with the, the depth of the research and the reporting out that we received. I don't remember ever getting a report that was, was quite thin in depth. I thought it was terrific. Uh, you know, it, it is amazing because you're right. Most, uh, I would say all of our textbook recommendations it's clear the amount of time and effort put into research by our staff to find the right textbooks and why uh, a certain piece was chosen. But this one in particular does go into quite a bit of much more detail on the work that was done. Yeah. So that is impressive. That was a good, good catch. Thank you. Anybody have anything else? Uh, then all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you very much. And thank you to our social studies folks and to Dr. Baker for all of their work. On, uh, on that effort. Uh, next up we have, may we have a motion please for approval on a cooperative bid for fine paper. So moved. Second. Moved by Marvin, seconded by Larry. And again, uh, we have uh, previously been given this, this is really fine paper. This is, well, it's a technical term, but it's a, it's a group bid through BOCES uh, for the use of uh, standard copy paper for the most part. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Uh, next up, approval of a motion, please, for approval of the construction contract bid for the Brighton High School roof replacement. So moved. Second. Moved by Larry, seconded by Andrea. Uh, this is a memo to Kevin prepared by Lou and passed on to us uh, to approve the roofing contract related to the 2017 Brighton Facilities Improvement Plan and detailed uh, along with the recommendation from campus construction that you see there. Does anybody have any further questions of Lou or comments on that? All right, then. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Uh, and then our consent agenda this evening. May we have a motion to, to please to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Moved by Karen and seconded by Andrea. Is that mm -hmm. what happened yeah. down there? <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, our consent agenda this evening does include two gifts. We want to appreciate... Uh, uh, show our appreciation and acknowledge those two gifts. One is a gift from Linda Lawrence to the Visual and Performing Arts Department of uh, Trumpet Mouthpieces and Trumpet Mutes. Also a gift from uh, Mark Hauser to the Visual and Performing Arts Department of a size 7 Stetson. So there you go. That's supposed to the prop department. For it. Wouldn't fit me. Whatever. <laughs> and it won't fit Mark, so it's yeah, it um, All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, Dr. McGowan, anything further this evening? Not enough. Uh, wrap up? Board members? Nope. Anybody, anybody individually? Nope. Uh, before we adjourn for this evening, I do remind folks that next Tuesday evening on March 1st, uh, we May have, 1st. Or May 1st. <laughs> turning back the clock. <laughs> May 1st. Uh, we don't want to revisit March, do we at all? <laughs> already well, for that part. Uh, May 1st is uh, Meet the Candidates Night, so uh, our four uh, board candidates will be here uh, answering questions, and that will also be televised on 1303. But uh, next Tuesday night, uh, we begin at 6.30, 6.30, 7 o'clock, uh, actual uh, evening uh, yep. itself, if you will, the discussion. So uh, may we please have a motion to adjourn? So second. second. Moved by Julian, seconded by Mar. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? We are adjourned, everyone. Thank you so much. This has been a special presentation from the Brighton Central School District Board of Education. 